lockdown and are standing by to take over control of Endeavour and the STS-47 mission at liftoff. We will now get an update from the Payload Operations Control Center in Huntsville. In Huntsville at the Space Lab Mission Operations Control Facility, the Payload Operations Director for the Space Lab J mission has confirmed that everything is ready here to support a launch this morning. There are dozens of scientists and engineers and science operations controllers from the United States and Japan who are on duty here and they're ready to begin carrying out their roles during the mission. Given an on-time launch, activation of experiments is expected to begin approximately three hours and 40 minutes after launch or at about 1 p.m. Central Time today. From that point on, the pace of activity here will be intense as the facilities here will serve as the nerve center for the science operations during the mission. So again, all is ready here in the Space Lab Mission Operations Control Facility to support today's launch of the Space Lab J mission. We'll now return to shuttle launch control at the Kennedy Space Center. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 7 minutes, 53 seconds and counting. Orbiter test conductor Roger Gillette has requested that Houston flight controllers send stored program commands, which are the final update on antenna management and any frequency changes here to the Launch Control Center. This update ensures that the orbiter has the latest information to communicate with the space flight tracking and data network stations and the tracking and data relay satellites throughout the mission. Yeah, let's just go for orbiter access arm retract. At T minus seven minutes and 30 seconds, we're now seeing the orbiter crew access arm retracting away from the orbiter Endeavour and being uh, put in the launch ready configuration. If an emergency were to occur, the arm could be re-extended back up to the orbiter in just 15 seconds. All systems are go at this point at T-minus 6 minutes, 52 seconds. Weather is ideal, the vehicle's in good shape, and we expect to see NT Endeavour off the ground in just under right, 7 minutes. Have an update for the crew on their Spec 50 display with your go. Uh, you have a go. JRPS OTC, pick up uh, 1101. Three quarters are running. Endeavour MCC, we would like you to select KSC 33 on your Spec 50 displays for RTLS. Okay, we'll get that. And PLT OTC, perform the APU pre-start. PLT and work. Orbiter test conductor Roger Gillette has just instructed Endeavour's pilot Kurt Brown to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start procedure. He will be setting the switches in the cockpit put the auxiliary power units in the ready to start configuration. OTC PLT, APU pre-start complete, three gray top max. Copy. Brown has just reported back to orbiter test conductor Roger Gillette that the auxiliary power unit pre-start is complete. Auxiliary power unit activation will come at the T minus five minute point in just about 30 seconds. The auxiliary power units provide power to the hydraulic pumps that control the movements of the elevons, rudders, speed brake, landing gear, nose wheel steering systems, and the space shuttle's main engine thrust vector controllers. T minus five minutes, 13 seconds, and everything remaining to look real good. Let's just go for orbiter APU start. TLT OTC, perform APU start. CDR, TLT and what? Reconfigure heater. We just received a go for auxiliary power unit start. Pilot Kurt Brown is now flipping three switches in the cockpit to start each of these auxiliary power units. Hydrazine is now flowing from the holding tanks towards the auxiliary power units. APU start complete, three at high green. Copy. Pilot Brown confirming we have auxiliary power unit start, and we're marching right along towards launching Endeavour here in another four minutes.
CLS is go for perch sequence four. T minus three minutes, 55 seconds. A test of the orbiter's flight control systems is starting. The aero surfaces, such as the rudders, elevons, and speed brakes, are now being moved through a programmed test pattern to verify they are up and ready for launch. T minus three minutes, 32 seconds. We are now transferring to internal power and switching off from ground power. At this point, Endeavour is being powered by its onboard fuel cells. Aerosurface checks are complete and reported to be in launch configuration. Also at this time, the three main engines are being yeah, gimbaled, meaning that they are going through a steering check and being positioned for launch. Coming up on the three minute mark in the count, in just a few seconds, we'll be pressurizing the liquid oxygen tank. CLS is go for ET yellow two pressurization. And we're now in the midst of pressurizing the liquid oxygen tank. All systems remain go for launching Endeavour on America's 50th space shuttle flight in just under three minutes. ELT, OTC, clear caution and warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. DLT and work. Orbiter test conductor Roger Gillette has just requested pilot Kurt Brown to clear the caution and warning memory system. Retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood from atop uh, the external tank is now in work. OTC, PLT. Caution warning memory is cleared, no unexpected messages. I copy and flight crew, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. Good luck on your mission and see you in one week. Orbiter Roger. test conductor Roger Gillette Roger. instructing the crew to close their flight visors and yeah, preparation for this morning's liftoff of Endeavour. We're just two minutes away from the second launch of Endeavour and the Space Lab J payload. One minute, 30 seconds. At T-minus one minute, the ground launch sequencer will verify that the space shuttle main engines are ready to start. When Endeavour's engines ignite, in about 80 seconds, we'll hear, we'll hear the roar of engines generating 37 million horsepower. And when the solid rocket motors ignite six min minutes, six seconds after that, we'll see more than seven million pounds of thrust as Endeavour and its seven astronauts head skyward. One minute. T minus 57 seconds and counting. T minus 45 seconds. The flight data recorders for the solid rocket boosters are now up and running. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. CLS is go for auto sequence start. We have a go for auto sequence start and the handout has occurred which puts the space shuttle on its own power. T minus 17 seconds, we're coming up on a go for main engine start. Yeah. CLS is go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two. One, solid rocket ignition, and liftoff, liftoff of Endeavour on America's 50th space shuttle flight. Houston, now rolling. Houston, Endeavour, switch you in the hole. Roger, roll, Endeavour.
Endeavour Houston, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. One minute, 20 seconds into the flight. Endeavour is now seven miles from the launch site, altitude 11 nautical miles. Now traveling 2,400 feet per second or about 1,700 miles per hour. The next event is a burnout of the solid rocket boosters. That occurs at about two minutes. Endeavour Houston, UHF comm check. How do you read? Two minutes into the flight now, Endeavour is 21 miles away from the Kennedy Space Center. Solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Standing by for the first stage performance call. Endeavour Houston, performance nominal. Roger, copy nominal performance. Performance thus far in the mission has been as expected. Endeavour is now 50 miles away from the launch site at an altitude of 38 nautical miles, traveling 4,800 feet per second or about 3,400 miles per hour. All three main engines are still performing well, as are the hydraulic and electrical systems aboard the orbiter. Endeavour Houston, two engines, Zaragoza. Copy, two engines, Zaragoza. Endeavour can now reach the primary transatlantic abort site of Zaragoza, Spain in the event of a single engine failure but all three engines are still performing well at 104 percent. Endeavour's altitude is now 293,000 feet, 85 nautical miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling 6,800 feet per second or 4,400 miles per hour. Four minutes into the flight now of Endeavour. Endeavour Houston, negative return. Roger, negative return. At this point in the mission, Endeavour can no longer return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure. However, all three are still performing well, as are the hydraulic and electrical systems aboard the orbiter. Endeavour's altitude is now 348,000 feet, downrange from Florida, 148 nautical miles traveling 8,600 feet per second, or about 5,700 miles per hour. <laughs> 